honor to be with you, uh, Professor Ashad, and uh, uh, the ben Benham University Orthopedic Department because of this great effort and uh, this generous uh, invitation for me to join you and uh, also to be uh, uh, to do this presentation with Ms. Professor Bahakarana is uh, also the difficult uh, test for me, really. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Professor Bahakarana, for this for this presentation. It was valuable and. It is uh, it's a nice presentation. Thank you for this. Thank you. Uh, so today we will talk about uh, both bone uh, for arm fracture in adult and pediatric. It is a little bit more common in pediatric population, and we will discuss all the aspects of this. First of all, if we go to the uh, to the literature, if you just do, go and do some search in the bone and joint publishing, we'll find more than 824 papers. So this, this uh, subject is already a lot of research and studies done about this. There's another uh, article, uh, this article uh, done by Hex in Birmingham Accident Hospital in November 1961. And this article is like what we call old is gold. This art article for six decades stated the, the, the concept of treating the forearm fractures in adult till now. So to give some introduction about the, the, the forearm, forearm in general, like anat the anatomy wise, the shorter bowed radius with the longer straight ulna, uh, there is uh, the elbow joint proximally communicate with the, by the radio capitular, which con uh, control the rotation, ulna humeral, which uh, go for flexion and extension, and also the rest joint distally. It is look, look like a ring-like structure maintained by the distal radio ulnar joint, proximal radio ulnar joint, and the interosseous membrane. This concept of ring-like structure is essential for pronation and supination because the bowed radius rotates around the static ulna. Both bones articulate with each other throughout all the entire length of both bones. Length and alignment of components is vital for preservation of the composite structure. So we can say the forearm fractures is intra-articular fractures. And this principle that govern management for decades. Epidemiology of this injury, forearm fractures were the most common type of fracture in the pediatric population. The age range from zero to 19 years old. It accounted about 17.8% of all fractures. This is stated by Naranj in 2016. Usually we see this fracture in men more than women. High energy trauma, we show that we see this commonly in the younger population. It can be direct, your direct blow or uh, injury or indirect like falling like this uh, lady which is doing some skiing uh, and she got this fall. It is less common in elderly because of the, uh, the most common is this, this radius and humerus because of the bone density. The prognosis of these fractures, depending on the functional results, depending on the restoration of the radial bow, malunion of the radius and ulna with angulation more than 20 degrees lead likely to limit the forearm rotation. Always remember the open fractures and the compartment syndrome. Classification, most of us using the descriptive way to, to describe the, the, the bo fracture both bone, like it's closed or open, the location is proximal third, middle third, distal third, comminuted, segmented, multi-fragmented, displacement, angulation, and the rotational alignment. There is also the AO classification describing the fracture pattern. It is simple fracture, it is a wedge fracture, or complex comminuted fracture. The presentation, the symptoms, usually the patient come complaining of pain and swelling, loss of the forearm and hand function, the physical exam during inspection, you should look for the gross deformity, open injuries, check also for tense forearm compartments or blisters, which indicating the ischemia and increase of the intercompartmental pressure. And neurovascular examination is essential and vital in such cases. As we mentioned before, most of cases coming with high energy trauma. So the possibility of compartment syndrome is, is more high, the open fracture is high. So we should document also, as Professor Ba mentioned in the last presentation, the documentation is essential to document the median, radial, and unnerved nerve function. Especially with, with such a fracture, we can find some patient coming with acute compartment syndrome due to the increase of the, uh, the pressure and treatment of the median nerve. 
can do some propagative tests to examine the compartment, like the passive stretch of the fingers. It is alert us to unbending or present compartment syndrome. In high energy scenario, we are not treating bone, we are treating, treating patients. So if you have high energy, don't forget to follow the ATMS protocol. Life saving is more important than limb saving. The imaging, the gold standard for the bone, the fracture bone, bone for arm is the X-ray, AB and lateral views. Uh, uh, oblique views can be used like additional views to see the, the orient more orientation about the fracture pattern. Also the wrist and elbow, ipsilateral joint above, joint below, to evaluate if there is any associated fracture or dislocation like radial head uh, or capitulum. CT and MRI is rarely indicated in the fracture both bone for arm. Sometimes, especially with the uh, like the pathological fracture, we can go to do CT or uh, MRI. The management in general, we have some consideration in our approach. All displaced adult forearm fracture should be stabilized because there is no other mean of management will give us a good result. And also there is a specific indications for operative treatment. As we mentioned, fracture of both bone, fracture dislocation like Montagia fracture or Galeazzi fracture, isolated radius fracture, displaced under shaft fracture, delayed union or non-union, open fractures. Any fracture with compartment syndrome should be treated operatively irrespective of extent of displacement. Okay, you are going to do fasciotomy. So we'll fix the fracture, by the way. Multiple fracture in the same extremity, like segmental fractures, floating elbow, and also pathological fractures. Conservative management. In a children, the usual plan is to attempt close reduction, followed by cast embolization. This is stated by Samora in 2014. There does not appear to be a significant difference when we applying after reduction, applying a, a single sugar tongue splint or long arm cast except in certain circumstances if we have obese child, because uh, Ayer in 2016 said, childhood obesity appeared to increase the risk of mal reduction and subsequent manipulations with uh, closed reduction and casting. Conservative management in adults, it is rarely indicated, but can be used, uh, in, we can use this with embolization in a molded long arm cast, can be used in rare occasions, of non-displaced fracture of both bone of the, of the forearm. And the follow-up of this patient should be close for up every week, especially the first four weeks, to detect any early displacement of the fracture. Sarmento in, Sarmento in, in 1975, he stated that he treated, he has a good series of, uh, of patient treated with uh, manipulation and casting in, of non-displaced fracture of the forearm. The operative management, Ob reduction and tendon fixation, the first common used option for the fracture. It is indicated in fracture both bone for arm, the gold standard in adults. The stellotype 1, 2, 3A in the open fractures may be treated with primary ob reduction and tendon fixation. We have some tips and tricks during the ob reduction and tendon fixation. Most of us start with radius, but the right thing, the fracture with the least comminution, and usually it is the ulna, by the way, should be fixed first. And the, the, the most safe way, especially for the junior doctors, do provisional fixation of both bone, assess the pronation, supination, examine this interoperatively. And then if you are satisfied with the pronation, supination, go for the different fixation. Because if you lose part of the pronation or supination, that means you didn't achieve the anatomical reduction. The plate should be centered on the bone, you should have six cortices in each side of the fracture, three proximal, uh, three screws, proximal and three, three screws distal. The blade should be contoured to fit the, 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 uh, the, the bone, especially the radius, because as we mentioned before, the radial bow, to maintain the normal, the normal bow of the radius for restoration, restoration of the normal function. Henley stated this in, in 2011. There's another option, the upper reduction and internal fixation plus bone grafting. This is indicated in the open fracture with significant bone loss, also in the uh, non-union of the forearm. Most of us, the most of cases we use the grafting, especially in the non-union cases, the general rule that the bone grafting is recommended when more than one third of the circumference of the bone is comminuted. Right, it's reported 
comparable, uh, comparable results in union and comminuted forearm fracture treated with or without bone grafting in 1997 and showing the same results. Also, we have another option, the interim dollar, interim dollar nailing. The indication of this can be segmental fracture, poor skin condition, selected non-union or failed compression plating, multiple injuries, diffusal fracture on osteopenic patients. But all of these indications now, we can treat all of these things by another way, rather than interim dollar fixation. Now we have more technology with the plating. We can use the MIBO technique, the bridging technique by the plate. So if we have patient with osteoporosis, we can use the log the plate LCP. If we have a poor skin, we can both temporary X fix and then if the skin condition improved, we can go for definite fixation. Segmental fracture, as we mentioned before, we can use the bridging technique. The outcome of the of the IM nailing with high non-union rate because, because the IM nailing do not provide compression across the fracture site. So the rule of the operative management, anatomical reduction, rigid fixation, early mobilization. So the IM nailing not achieving the, uh, the rigid fixation in this scenario. There is a, a study done on, this is a cadaveric study done in 2016 by Zhang in China. He, uh, it is biomechanical study about the hybrid fixation. He tried to mix the fixation by using a plate in, uh, in the bone and IM nailing in the other bone. And he said the biomechanically, this fixation is, can be the same efficient like the double plating of both bones. I think I can accept this and in, in if you fix the plate in the radius and the IM nail in the ulna because the plate will give us the way to restore the bowing of the radius. Because if we both nail in the radius, it will be straight nail. I can't, we can't achieve the bowing of the radius, but it still need more studies and more to say, to give us a result and enough data about this. Also in the, in the, in the children, uh, the birth clearance or clothes reduction with intramodular nailing unit tense nail, titanium elastic nails or Nancy nails. The indication of this in the children, unacceptable alignment following the closed reduction, like angulation more than 15 degrees, rotation more than 45 degrees in children younger than 10 years of age, angulation more than 10 degrees or rotation more than 30 degrees in children older than 10 years, being of opposition in children older than 10 years. This X-ray is of a, a, a girl six years old, fell from a trampoline and she came. We did the MUN casting in, day, in the first day it was the, uh, the position was fine. After one week, when she came to the clinic, we found this displacement happened. So we decided to take her and we achieved closed reduction and uh, Nancy nailing. We used a two millimeter Nancy nail to achieve the reduction. It was, uh, she did well with this. The open fracture, uh, the open forearm fracture, the traditional practice before was to refrain from using the internal fixation initially an open fracture of the forearm. Initial management was with irrigation, debridement, X-fix. Subsequently, the, the, the trend shifted towards initiation, initiating immediate open reduction internal fixation of all open forearm fractures. CD in 2008, he did this in type one and two Gastello open diffusal forearm fracture. It is appropriate. The, the rate of complication was fine and accepted. Uh, Duncan et al. reported in 1992, reported 90% acceptable results in, in the stereotype 1, 2, and 3A. But he honestly, he said in type 3B and 3C, the results was poor with high rate of complication like infection and uh, non-union. And the operative management, the uh, some concept, the fracture best to be internally fixed as soon after injury to avoid the, the swelling, which changing the anatomy and make the, the section is difficult. To address the ulnar fracture, we're using the ulnar approach. This is interneural approach between the extensor carpi and nerves and the flexor carpi and nerves is used between the, this is uh, the ulnar nerve and the uh, posterior interosseous nerve. Uh, the blade can be used on either the posterior or the anterior aspect of the ulna. The posterior surface is preferred because it is the tension side of the ulna, so the biomechanically giving some advantage. And also the care should be taken to avoid damage of the dorsal sensory branch of the ulna nerve, especially in the distal third. Also to mention in the ulna fracture, sometimes we face uh, the ulna fracture is really, really distal. 
so you can't find the space to achieve to 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 do to bought three screws in the distal fragment. Thank you for the technology. We have now the 2.7 uh, plates, which we can use it in the under fracture to achieve this, to uh, achieve this reduction and put this plate in the in the under fracture. To address the the radius fracture, we have the most common. All of us familiar with the uh, with Henry approach, uh, the, the Palmer approach, the most common approach. It uses the interneural interval between the brachioradialis, which is uh, uh, derivated by the radial nerve and the pronator teres proximally, or the flexor carbioradialis distally, which is innervated by the median nerve. Most of us using the modified Henry or FCR approach and the we are treating the distal radius, but the Henry approach is the gold standard. For deep dissection, uh, the one of the advantage to, uh, to ligate or coagulate the arterial branches going to supplying the brachioradialis, especially in the middle and proximal third, because uh, and also to, to be careful uh, ligated to avoid the hemorrhage and increase the compartment increase the compartment pressure after the surgery and also uh, one of the one of the tricks during during the doing the henry approach if you are dressing fracture in the middle third sometimes with the hematoma and the swelling you can't see the interval between the uh, the brachioradialis and the flexor carboradialis at that at that level so you can just go distally you will find then like a triangle go to the apex of this triangle this is the interval between the two muscles and then dissect it from distal to proximal so you can address the fracture easily there is another another approach it is a thompson approach not all of us using this approach honestly it is access the radial shaft and the septum between the excessive carboradialis previous and the excessive digitorum muscles it can be useful in the fracture in the proximal and the middle third of the radius. And also you can address the proximal radio uh, ulnar joint if there is injury there. It is a less soft tissue strapping than the Balmer approach and patient may experience more rapid return of wrist and hand function. In UK now and Ireland it start to gaining some popularity, to, but to be honest, there is two points. The first point, most of people using this approach in the isolated radius fracture. And also there is a new study done in May 2020 by Dash in Germany, and he comparing between the Thompson approach and Henry approach, and he said there is no significant difference between both of them in, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in relation to the function or complication. And the operative management, the reduction technique, periosteal stripping should be limited to the minimum, and the plate 3.5 millimeter is the gold standard size and the ideal size for forearm bone. Uh, for forearm fracture using bigger plates theoretically giving more stiffness and more rigidity but it will lead to increase some complication like refracture after removal of the plate uh, the purpose of the plate as we know neutralize the torsional forces and the shades should be obtained as we mentioned before six cortices in, in each side we can use also another technique to increase the uh, the, the to make the the fixation more rigid to use interfragmentary leg screw if possible. We can use it independently or through the plate to achieve more uh, rigidity. The most important point, point in the closure, uh, close only the subcutaneous tissue and the skin. Avoid closing the deep fascia, because if you do that, you will increase the intercompartmental pressure and the compartment syndrome will be imminent and can may lead to ischemic contracture if it is not painful, like Volkman ischemic contraction later on. Most operative care, if, they, if, you are, if you are trust your fixation, let patient move without any, any splint or any cast. If you are in doubt or the fracture pattern is more comminuted or something, so you can bolt the patient in a splint or cast for a couple of weeks, give a chance to the soft tissue to heal and remove the, your skin clips or the skin sutures, and then but you should encourage the range of movement exercise of the shoulder and hand from day one. Uh, the elbow range of movement and pronation supination exercise can be started when the pain and swelling permit for that. However, if you have an uncompliant patient, we're facing this too much. If you have some patient which are the alcohol, alcoholic patient, they will never follow up our, our, follow our instructions. So we bought them in above elbow cast for six weeks. 
it's because uh, we will not we don't want to, to to put our our fixation in a danger the problem is to put the patient in such cost we will need you know the elbow is so sensitive for embolization the patient will come with elbow stiffness and we need a lot of work up with the uh, occupational therapist and the physiotherapist to gain regain the the range of movement at the elbow joint the complication non-union the incidence of union is not too high less than five percent after compression plating and the comminuted fracture or open fracture which is treated by bridge plating or relative stability the non-union rate a little bit higher about 12 percent as we mentioned sensitive comminution poorly applied plate fixation your technique is so important and so eminent to achieve the union and also, as we mentioned before, the intermodular nailing because we lack of the compression at the fracture site. If we have non-union, we can, if we have a trophic non-union, we can treat by plate, 3.5 plates. If you have a plate, you can redo the plate with bone grafting. If there is an infection and the trophic non-union can be treated with a masculine technique, you know, the stage technique using the, to create a biological membrane and then we can fix it and put some graft. And as McQueen said in 2008, accurate open reduction tunnel fixation prevents most of these complications. Infection, the incidence of infection, 3% with open reduction tunnel fixation is higher, sure, with the open fracture. Compartment syndrome is 15% according to the mechanism of injury. You can see the, 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 the uh, compartment in the open fractures and the high energy scenario. The risk factor, as you mentioned, high energy crush injury, open fracture, uh, the gunshot wounds, and vascular injuries. Sinostosis, uh, it is three to nine percent in most of the studies. The risk factor associated with the open reduction tunnel fixation with a single incision, and the highest risk of sinostosis, as said by Bauer in 1991, with the proximal uh, third of both radius and and ulnar, the proximity of the of the bone. And this will 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 stop the will affect the function of pronation supination. To treat this, we need excise this, and also we can give the prophylactic radiation therapy or endomethazine as used postoperatively. Refracture, as we mentioned before, up to 10% in uh, with early removal of the plate. So most of of people like Vobet in 2014 said, do not remove the plate, at least wait for one year. A large plate like 4.5 because of the stress risers occurring at the edge of the plate so the refracture happened and also the it left the bone weak and also in the comminuted fracture long-term monitoring of this patient is important so we should follow up the patient with x-rays regularly to until we see the healing as we mentioned before we need we, we are doing a rigid fixation so we will not see a callus so it is not easy to follow up these patients. And also we should avoid any sternus activity until the bone trabeculae cross the fracture and the healing is achieved. Take home or stay at home in current situation because of the COVID-19 message. Forearm fractures, intra-articular fractures. Always remember open fracture and the compartment syndrome. The principle of management in adults, anatomic reduction, rigid fixation, early mobilization, in the children, the gold standard MUN casting, and avoid single incision. Sternus, sternus activity must be prohibited until bone trabecular cross the fracture. And thank you. This image, I captured this image from the hospital after the snow last week. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, for this uh, very uh, interesting talk about a very common, very common problem. We yeah. see it uh, in uh, every day. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Also. Thank you. Thank you. Marvelous talk, sir. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are waiting for questions. Uh, the first question from me, uh, Professor Ibrahim, uh, is it mandatory uh, from your talk? Is it mandatory to remove the plate? No, this is, yeah. it is not a routine practice yeah. now. Uh, usually we are not yeah, like, uh, like it is, it is, if there is no problem, why to take patient to uh, yeah. exposure patient for another anesthesia and another operation you can escape from infection or complication in the first uh, yeah. surgery and you get it in the second one so no need no need but there is some patient asking about it especially with the like in the, the plate in the ulnar side if it is a little bit prominent or something 
بيشل اسك فور بس ذيس از نوت روتين يس نوت روتين كان عندي حلقه فيري نايس كيس كان كومينيوتد فراكشر هيومرس وكان عمل بليتنج عملت له بليتنج وعدى كويس جدا ويونايتد كويس جدا والراجل انسيستنج ان هو يريموف البليت هو انا مش انا اللي عملتها يعني وان اوف اور كوليجز ديد ات وفي البليت ريموفال الراجل جاله ريديال بولسي فاهمني مش في البليت هو امبروفد بعد كده الحمد لله ينطبق عليه الفتنه نائمه لعن الله ما يقظها <تصفيق> دكتور ابراهيم احنا بعض الاحيان بنلاقي صعوبه جدا في حكايه الكونتورنج بتاع ريديال كراتش ريديوس وبالذات مع الشرائح الافيلابل فهل تفضل ان انت تعمل ريكونستراكشن بليت احسن من ال من ال1/3 او او اللي هي النارو دي فور مي تو بي اونست بروفيسور با وي ار نوت دوينج ذس كونتورنج ان ذا ريديوس لايك از ا روتين تو بي اونست بيكوز ذا نيو ال سي بي ذا ال سي دي سي بي ات از ريلي ستيف اند سترونج بليت وي كودنت دو ذس بت Like this is theoretical thing. To be honest, we're not doing this as a regular thing. But there is some, some one of one of my colleagues, Mr. Morty, he's like to do this, so he's using gray complete in this. But and the result, but what, what the, the disadvantage of his method, as I, I had a discussion with him, he botting the patient in a cast for four to six weeks. But if we if you bot LCB like LC LCDCB. You, I, I, myself, I bought the patient in crib bandage, wall and crib, and that's it. Like uh-huh. maximum, I bought him an arm sling. That's it. Patient move his arm, move his elbow from day one. So this is this is the, if you want to do to do the contouring, so you need to bought the patient in a cost for a long time. I, and I, I feel it is not a, a good a good practice to be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. We have questions for you, uh, Doctor Ibrahim. Uh, the first question. Uh, from Dr. Ahmed, is it acceptable uh, to do single bone fixation in fracture post bone for arm, and if okay, which bone? Okay, this is this is really a difficult question <laughs> yeah. because the 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 uh, it is an adult we should fix both bones. Of course, okay. there is some exception, some some exceptions like if you have a fracture uh, radius, and the fracture ulna is undisplaced. Sometimes we can go to fix the, the the radius and leave the ulna. But as I mentioned before, this is like risk benefit. You will put the patient in the cost for six weeks. So already I'm I'm taking patient to theater. I'll make incision. I'll make operation. So the patient already sleeping. So I can put the another plate and let patient move his arm early. Yeah. But it can be, it can be done like this. But, but I lost the benefit uh, of uh, rigid fixation and yes. early uh, rehabilitation. Yes. This, this is as I mentioned. So the yes. early mobilization can be done. Yes. So the so if if if, if like if I need to take the patient to theater, I'll fix it. Yeah. I know in some circumstances, and I bought through this before, uh, like the uh, economical, like in some countries, this would be difficult because of the cost effectiveness. Then we can go for this. But here, you know, there is no problem in this. We have everything. Everything is available, so no need to do this. Yes. Uh, another question. Another question. Uh, and uh, if I'm, I'm taking the patient to the theater and preparing everything, and I think I have to do the best for him. Yes. So uh, single fixation or uh, better? No, it is double fixation, double and you have to give a patient the best chance for uh, the reason you are taking him to the theater. Yes. So it is very important to and discuss with him that you are going to do the best for him. Yes. Yes, sir. Another question for uh, elastic nail fixation in pediatrics: one of two nail, one or two nails for each bone. Which do you prefer, one or two nails? No, and no. how can we judge the proper size of the elastic nail? Okay. The 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 the, the point is the elastic nail in children. We we, we need to put the. Uh, The, the nail, we, we achieve the three point fixation by uh, re bending the nail before inserting it. Number one, number two, it should fill two thirds of the medullary canal. Yes. And this is like usually, you know, the, the normal size we're using up to age of six years, we're using two millimeter. More than this, we can use 2.5. There is some exception, some big, big children, we can use three millimeter, but to, to be honest, I never use three millimeter, usually two millimeter or 2.5 millimeter. 
so you can measure in the in the if you have uh, the the X-ray, you can measure the the the, the dollar canal, and remove the magnification ten to fifteen percent, and then put a, a nail two third of the, the 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 diameter of the of the of the dollar. This will achieve a good a good uh, fixation. Which which material you use? Uh, is it titanium or uh, in chilling? Titanium uh, or stainless steel? We are the, the old, I used before ender nail before, but now with the, uh, everything is the titanium. We have two systems, the Nancy nail, which is the, the like uh, all of the nail, the same length, but different diameters with its color coded. And we have the tense nailing, the tense system, which is different diameter and length, but I, I prefer Nancy nail. Nancy nail is, is, is more easy to use. And less exposure of X-rays, as you you already bought the nail, and then you cut the X the uh, the nail according to the size, and that's it. The other nail you need to X-ray outside to measure it out, like before inserting the nail. So you expose the patient for more radiation. Yeah, Doctor Ibrahim, I saw one of your uh, X-rays for uh, the uh, ulnar nailing. Uh, do you prefer uh, distal or proximal entry? For the ulnar, the ulnar, uh, the ulnar, uh, the tense nailing for the ulnar. Yeah. The titanium nail, flexible nail. Flexible nail. I, I, I prefer the, the, the. We have two common ways to use this. Go through the olecranon. Yeah. Okay. And my way, I like to go to the radial side of proximal. Yeah. The radial side because this is less prominent, so it is not causing uh, irritation. The, the patient will remove this after four to six months, so you need the patient to be satisfied with the nail. This is number one, and number two, we are not crossing uh, physis, any growth plates. So you go from the radial aspect of proximal ulna. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Brahim, we have lots of questions, if you have time. Oh, no, it is early. Here is still, <laughs> still uh, 9, 12. Still yeah. too early. <laughs> uh, is there a rule for plating one bone and Nancy nail in the other in adults? I think it is, as we mentioned before, uh, the forearm fracture, both bone forearm fracture is inter, in, intra-articular fracture. So you need rigid fixation. If you do this, it will be rotational malalignment. Like if I fix, for example, I, I bought plate in the radius side and I bought nail in the in the ulnar side, Nancy nail, it is the rotational malalignment. This will be rotational malalignment. So I, I, I don't believe in this. So uh, plating, double plating, the gold standard for the forearm. Uh, there is some some people trying to 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 push for for elastic nailing in elastic elastic nail in the in the in the forearm in adults, but I don't believe in this. I I, I don't believe even like theoretically, biomechanically, it is not stable at all. Yeah. One of our colleagues is reporting that cyanostosis was usually reported after Henry approach. Like all of us did did uh, use the Henry approach. Yeah. Uh, so, I have one of them. This is due to I think the, the sinostosis, there is a lot of factors affecting sinostosis, but I, th I think the most of cases of sinostosis happen in young patients, patients with multiple, multiple injuries, especially with the head injury. I saw two or three cases sinostosis happened with the, with the patient with head injury. With, this, is, this is a common thing. But the also stripping, uh, as, as, as we mentioned, if you minimize the soft tissue stripping, you will decrease the chance for sinusitosis. But nobody can predict this. Yeah. Nobody can predict it. You know, you are, you know, your experience and Professor Bat, you know this. Nobody can predict sinusitosis. The next question, I think you have uh, already answered it. Is it better to do a distal or proximal entry for? Uh, Nancy Neal Alna in pediatrics, you have already answered it, sir. Uh, another question in segmental fracture uh, Is it better to use two overlapping volar and dorsal plating? This is this is a technique, this is a technique, but I think this is a lot of stripping, and yeah. the, usually the segmental fracture it is high energy trauma, so we need to decrease our 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 energy to the the. the so what we do, we do using like a, like not MIBO, clearly MIBO technique, but it is minimal invasive technique. We slide the blade and we cross some screws through the segment itself. So we, we fix the blade proximally, distally, and bust a couple of screws in this in the in the fragment, in the in the long segment itself to achieve some some stability. To, de to we decreasing the working length. 
so it decreased the 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 the, the, the um, increasing the rigidity at the fracture side. Yeah, the last question is from me, Dr. Ibrahim. In a comminuted fracture postpone for arm, do you do you prefer <laughs> primary grafting or do you prefer biological fixation and minimal stripping and uh, postpone uh, uh, boom grafting uh, uh, to the follow up? I prefer the second option. Yeah, you don't uh, recommend the primary yeah, grafting. Yeah, this is because the uh, like the with the comminution, you know, prof. The if you keep this, uh, you keep the biological environment with less stripping, so we give more chance for healing. So we I don't put a foreign thing until the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the real thing or the normal thing uh, give a chance to to to, to heal. If it doesn't heal, okay, then we, we were obliged to do to go to do grafting. Yes. Um, I see no questions. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, marvelous night with marvelous speakers, okay. Professor uh, <laughs> Corona, El Azhar University, and Dr. Ibrahim Kamar from uh, Ireland. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, Inshallah.